You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hi everybody, welcome back. In this podcast, I'm spending time talking about myself, but I want you to remember that this podcast is for you. I'm trying to touch you, and I'm trying to move you, and I'm trying to communicate. But I also want you to understand where everything I say is coming from. And so I want you to also know me. So part of touching you is opening myself up to you. And this is why I want to share this tale of suffering. I still remember the day it started. I was walking home from school and all of a sudden I had a twinge of pain in my side. Just really sudden and quick, like a little a little zap. And it sort of made me miss a step and I sort of stopped and checked myself for a moment and had to figure out what that was. But it stopped there, so I just kind of made a mental note to keep an eye on that. It felt, it seemed weird. And I went home. And over the next year, this thing started bothering me a little more frequently over time. Uh, it would twinge or twitch or pinch um, more frequently. And it was also starting to develop into a mild and ever-present soft soreness in the area. It was sore to the touch um, if I pressed on it, and I also had to change the position I usually sleep in because I was putting pressure on it when I slept. So I knew that something was developing. I knew that something was getting worse. So I would go to doctors and tell them about it, and they would have a look. They would run all sorts of tests, and nothing was showing up. So... The only thing to do was take painkillers when it bothered me and try and see where it goes. But it did worry me, and I did keep an eye on it. And so it went for a while, uh, not a huge deal, just a minor annoyance. Until one night, um, maybe a year, a year and a half later, I was at a friend's house sleeping over. And in the middle of the night, I woke up to pain, just pain, that's all it was, it was stabbing, cutting, blinding pain in my side where this pain, this dull pain and ache was before, and it was shocking and overwhelming how hard and fast it struck me, and I had been sleeping, so I was half confused, I didn't know what to do. So I quietly got out of bed and went into the bathroom and I just sort of collapsed on the floor. I just sort of balled up on the cold bathroom tile and just went through pain. Just went through it. I I was thinking, is it something I ate? Is it food poisoning? Is this an emergency? Am I going to die tonight? Um, I was just just stuck. I was just frozen in the pain, and it lasted for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, I don't know. But eventually it faded slowly, and I sort of fell asleep. I guess passed out. And the next morning, my friend found me sleeping on the floor, and I explained what happened, and didn't know what to make of it, except that I should really go see a doctor. And I did. I went to see the doctors again, and they ran tests, and the whole dance again, and they found nothing. Strange. Strange, because I knew that I had been through something serious. But, as the tests would say, uh, maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe it was just the food. Who knows? So, I went on. And over that year, it happened again. Maybe two or three times. And always in the middle of the night, I would wake up with the stabbing, cutting pain. And I would think, oh my god, not again. And just have nothing that I could do except go through it. 
I would take painkillers, but they wouldn't help, and I would just have to suffer that night. That was waking up to suffering. I would wake up with the pain and know, okay, I'm going to suffer tonight, and I'm not going to sleep. It's going to go away, but whatever this thing is, I have to go through it because there's nothing that anyone can do. And all sorts of paranoias would come up in my brain. Is this cancer? Is this some sort of illness? What is this? I would do research. It was a hunt for, for what this could be. And I would take the research to doctors and they would look into it and they would do more tests and everything coming up negative. So what could I do? There was nothing to do except go through it when it would happen. And so this became a thing that was haunting me once in a while in my life. It was uh, a visitor that would come and ruin my evening once in a while. But overall, once I got through it, besides the fear that it would bring, I, I was okay. Life was going on. But as the years went on, it became more and more frequent all the time. And the dull ache that had started all this after attacks would hurt more and it would take a while to settle down and so I knew that something was getting worse both in the frequency and the long lasting effects afterwards I knew that there was something really getting worse and growing and it kept feeling like cancer it kept feeling like like scary things that get worse and kill you eventually and so it was some kind of torture to be going through this and yet every time you would go to the doctors they couldn't find anything so all I could do was go through the suffering and try to deal with it as best I could and for the most part it was bearable because it was relatively infrequent and the rest of the time it was just a minor soreness but then eventually I started working and going through all the stresses of being in a business environment and that just made things really worse that's when I found out that stress was activating this thing if I would have a very very tough situation uh, a conflict with a coworker, or something that would that would spike my emotions um, this thing would be set off and I would have a stabbing attack that night and I would not sleep and I would have to miss the next day at work and this was becoming a real problem and the attacks were getting more frequent because of this and not only that but the after pain was lasting longer and it was getting stronger all the time if I could describe the pain of those attacks I could do it quite easily it was a knife it was a knife in my gut that would twist and that would slash and that would cut my insides. And at times it would feel like my intestines were a sausage, tight like the skin of a sausage. And that there was a knife just peeling it open, just peeling open the sausage from one side to the other. I felt like my insides were splitting open. It was torture. It was torture. And for years I tried to keep it together still and keep going to work and bite the bullet where I had to, take days off when I had to. I burned through all my vacation days. I never was able to have a proper vacation because my vacation days were always spent and I was taking days off with no pay. And my work was questioning what was happening and I would try to explain it to them. But without a diagnosis, it's as if they didn't believe me. It's as, if, it's as if it was nothing. And try as I might to tell them how much I was suffering and that there was pain, it didn't show because I held it together so well. And because of that, they didn't feel it. They didn't believe me. And so I had doctors starting to tell me after all these tests that it must be in my mind because they don't see anything. And I had people at work, superiors at work, saying that I was lying, acting as if I was exaggerating, and asking me to look happier at work, as if that was something I was doing to them, not looking happy enough. 
when I was telling them that I'm in pain. So it was tough mentally too. It ravaged my life. I couldn't have friends. I couldn't socialize because every day I'd have to run home eventually and just collapse. I held it together through every workday that I could get through and I would go home and just fall and just suffer. <laughs> my life was suffering. I couldn't go on dates because every time I had a plan, it would strike, and I'd have to cancel, and people would not understand, and they would eventually just give up. So I had a very hard time with life in general, and because of this, my life was that pain. My life was that suffering. There was no room for anything else, and slowly it was destroying me. I fought it off for so long, but as it was getting worse and getting more frequent, by this time, at least once a month, I would get the serious attacks. And, and near the end, it was definitely once a week, sometimes twice a week. And the lingering pain afterwards stopped being just a dull ache and started being just the knife sitting there, waiting to attack again. It was horrible. So believe me when I tell you that I know suffering. I went through suffering. And it damn near killed me. Because as the knife bled me, and stole all my energy, and as everyone around me, except my family, were slowly convincing me that I was exaggerating and that I was wrong, I started contemplating suicide. Now you have to understand that I am not a suicidal type person. And that's how bad it was that the thought suicide was lingering around my mind. A little voice saying, you know, you can just kill yourself. It's all gonna stop. They'll understand. Your family will at least understand. And to have that thought creeping around my head, just that alone was reason for despair and I could tell that it was defeating me but there was nothing to do no matter how much I reached out to doctors they could do nothing and they would get impatient with me they would send me out because I was so stubborn in telling them that they were wrong and they couldn't take that ego and they would send me away instead of really look and yes, it damn near killed me. Until one day, I decided to take a little break. As things were overwhelming me, I decided to visit a friend across the country. Even the plane ride over was a risk because the position of sitting for a long period of time would put pressure on the area and the longer I sat still anywhere, the more I was pressing my luck, the more it was likely to set off another attack. So a long plane ride was a risk, and I took a lot of painkillers with me, I took them ahead of time, and I got through the flight without much incident, but it did get irritated a bit. Now after spending a couple days with my friend, on the night before I left, he happened to smoke some marijuana. He was an avid marijuana smoker, I knew this for a long time, but I was never too interested to uh, partake. I had tried it once when I was in high school, and the effect it had on me was very, very unpleasant that first time, so it had turned me off. As a personality, drugs in general were never something on my radar. I never had any curiosity about experimenting with drugs. So marijuana was something I had put aside a long time ago. But here he was, smoking some marijuana, and he offered me some. Well, I'm thinking about killing myself anyway, so what's so scary about a little marijuana? So I had some with him, and I proceeded to have that evening the usual, very interesting first proper experience of marijuana. And it was very fascinating uh, to feel these new sensations and this new state of mind and feel lost but having a good time at the same time it was it was just an interesting experience and that's all I saw it as and the next day 
when I was clear-headed again, um, I would have just put that away and checked that off the list. Okay, so that's what marijuana does. Moving on. But on the plane ride home, about halfway through, I suddenly realized that the pain in my side wasn't flaring up. And I hadn't taken any painkillers. And not only that, but I couldn't even find the pain in my side. I had to reach for it with my mind, and I could just find a dull little whisper of the pain. And I poked it, and it didn't hurt. And I, I, I was amazed. This was the first time at this point in possibly two years that the pain had been completely gone. Because as I said, at the point where I was, the knife was always there, even when it wasn't twisting. It was a very palpable pressure and presence of something. And now it was gone. The knife was gone. What the hell happened? And so for the rest of the plane ride, I could only come up with the conclusion that this was marijuana. Marijuana really was a medical tool. And it's helping me. So of course, when I got back home, I reached out to a friend who I know also smokes marijuana, and I asked him to get me some for an experiment to try it out for a month and see what happens. And so I did. I used it every day for a month. And that month was a month pain-free. And everything got brighter in my life. I was happier going to work. I was four times more productive. I was enjoying the walk to work instead of feeling the pain every time my right foot hit the ground. I was finally able to breathe. And I had been delivered from suffering. By marijuana, this thing that I had been told all my life is dangerous, evil, and is illegal, and if I dare go near it, I will be imprisoned and punished. And here was that thing saving my life and freeing me from my pain. But I'm serious when I tell you this, it saved my life. Because within a month or two, I probably would have killed myself. And thanks to marijuana, I was able to proceed for six more months. When the attacks would occur, the serious attacks, marijuana didn't help. But it slowed down the frequency of them. And it made the in-between a lot more bearable. But I was still getting these attacks. And the mystery was still there. What is happening in me? And so it helped. Marijuana helped. But I was still slowly sinking. Marijuana held me up through all of this. Until it got so serious that I was getting these acute attacks about once every other day. And then it happened. The big one. An attack that lasted three days. Three days of this torturous pain. And after the first day of rolling around with it, as I always did, when I woke up on the second day and it was still there, still going on, I dragged my ass to a doctor and I told him to look at me right now. And he put me on the table and he pressed on my abdomen and he saw my reaction and immediately went, whoa. Okay, you're going to the emergency room. And he wrote me a note telling the emergency room doctor who he knew. A personal note saying, you give this guy a scan right now. Because this is serious. And he gave me the note and he said, go to the emergency room and give this to the doctor. And he will give you a scan and we will fix this. And for the first time I had a ray of hope. This note was my deliverance. This note was was finally progress, finally movement, we're onto something, he sees something. And so, even though I was in pain, <laughs> I was in pain even that moment, I was happy because I was going towards my solution, and I went to that emergency room, and I waited hours to see that doctor. And when I saw the doctor, I gave him the note, and he read it, and the note said, appendicitis. And he looked at me, and he looked at the note, and he gave me the note, and he said, you don't have appendicitis. I'm not giving you a scan. Oh. 
That doctor does not know how close he came to receiving the only punch I would have ever thrown in my life. I stood there and, in disbelief, told him, you get a social worker in here right fucking now, because if you don't, you are taking me out of here through the police. There is going to be a situation here if you do not get a social worker in here right now. And it took about an hour, but they got one in the room, and I told her all of this. And she went to talk to the doctors, and she convinced them to scan me. And the doctor was adamant that I don't have appendicitis. He told me to my face, I can tell just by looking at you that you don't have appendicitis. If you had appendicitis going on right now, you would be on the ground rolling. You would not be able to walk. I have seen appendicitis, and you cannot look that way with appendicitis. But I did. And they scanned me. And what happened afterwards was three surgeons came to meet me. And they said, okay, we're preparing an emergency room for you because you have appendicitis and your appendix is about to burst. And this is an emergency. But of course the doctor that had rejected me was nowhere to be seen. He couldn't even face me. But I turned down the emergency surgery because I knew that the recovery would be difficult. I had no family in town, no friends to take care of me. And so I told the surgeons to book an appointment for later that week so my family could come and support me. And they were confused. They, they had a long conversation with me about how I was imminently about to have a burst appendix. And I had to explain to them that I had been carrying this thing for years, and I knew it. And it was a severe attack right now, but it would clear away, and there would be time to remove it in a less urgent way. And it was only then, from their questioning, that I put the math together and realized how long it had been. It had been nine years. Nine years of this suffering. And I had barely seen them go by because I had barely lived. They didn't even believe me when I told them I had had it for nine years. They wouldn't believe me when I told them something was wrong, and they wouldn't believe me when I told them it had been wrong for nine years. Stubbornness. The ego of doctors. So they booked the surgery, and they took it out. And wouldn't you know it, when they took it out, it looked normal. I had a kind of appendicitis that is apparently very rare. A kind of appendicitis that comes and goes, that almost bursts, but then doesn't, and goes away, and comes back. And I hope some of you listening have had appendicitis in the past so you can understand the pain, and understand and feel for me when I tell you that I went through it for nine years, and the pain damn near killed me, and marijuana kept me alive long enough for a solution. And even after the surgery, the drama wasn't over. The surgery was botched, and for two months after the surgery, the exact same appendicitis pain was still there, because there was pressure from bleeding inside me, and it felt exactly the same, and it was putting pressure on the suture, and it was doing all kinds of havoc to my intestinal tract. And again, I almost went crazy, because... The thing causing me pain was gone, and the pain was replaced. And just like when I would go through the attacks, I had to just wonder, why, 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 why the suffering? This makes no sense. Why am I cursed? Eventually it got better, but not before I lost my job for recovering too slowly. And what followed was a collapse of everything I had built in my life, and I collapsed back into the family home, and I was unemployed for three years as I tried to recover my strength and put myself back together. But the thing is, looking back at it today, I'm glad it happened. Can you believe it? Because in the aftermath, in the rubble of all that, something amazing has come together inside me. 
I've told you in the past that pain means growth. That difficult experience means growth if you can get through it. And the difficulty of the experience is equal to the amount of growth that will come out of it. And so if you understand what those nine years of suffering, how, how much suffering and pain that was, I'm telling you that even now, there's something equally amazing happening inside me. Only because of that. And the story of me, the story of this podcast, is partly the story of all these pieces coming together. The tattered pieces of my life so far, all of a sudden making sense. And now you know two more pieces. There was Occupy. But before Occupy, there was suffering. And through suffering, there was marijuana. And to this day, it's a part of my life. And I don't care if it's illegal. I don't care. It saved my life. And it's a part of my life as a result. And so you understand that when I see an unjust law from that perspective, it means nothing. Because if the law was to be followed, I would be dead. And all the beautiful messages I'm trying to bring you through this podcast would never be heard. And if I'm putting myself at risk by saying this, I also don't care. Because maybe it'll help someone else. And that concludes this tale of suffering. I'm not asking you to pity me. I'm just asking and hoping that you love me a little bit from the opening of my heart that I just showed you. This is I, broadcasting from the center of my soul. Till next time. <laughs>